Coming up next, police arrest a man. They say sexually assaulted other men he met on a dating app. Tonight, investigators still need your help. And police also catch up to the man accused of killing an L.A. County deputy over the weekend. Plus, a 23 and a half cent per gallon hike in one week. What's pushing our gas prices so high and why we're still paying more here in Southern California? After a tragic childhood, Chef Lawless found her happy place in her kitchen. We've got her new beer and cookbook. This is CBS 8 News Live at 6. Escondido police are asking for the public's help to identify potential victims of a man accused of sexually assaulting other men he met on the dating app Grindr. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Marcella Lee. I'm Carlo Chiquetto. Police say the suspect would lure his victims by pretending to be someone else. CBS 8's David Goffinson obtained court records that say the man was squatting in the apartment where the alleged assaults took place. This is cell phone video recorded Friday afternoon showing the arrest of 28-year-old Tobias Barti at the Forest Glen apartment complex in Escondido. I saw a full like SWAT vehicle with guys in armored vests and guns. Neighbors say the SWAT officers fired a flashbang grenade at the apartment before Barti surrendered, asking police, what did I do? You know, I didn't know what it was at first. I threw it up on the patio there and it was super loud and my kids got scared and everything, but yeah, it was crazy. Police served this search warrant on the house after getting complaints from four different men who said Barty catfished them on the dating app Grinder, pretending to be a white male who wanted to hook up. What he would say is, is that he had a roommate who was a white male adult and he was in the, in the apartment or he wasn't home and they could come on in. And then when the individual came in, they realized that there wasn't anybody else there. And that's when the assaultive behavior occurred. Escondido police say Barty threatened two of the men with a gun, forcibly kissing one man and sexually assaulting another. He remains behind bars, arrested on charges of kidnapping with intent to commit rape, sodomy and oral copulation by force, and assault by strangulation. Court records show Barty is on felony probation for drug-related offenses, and police believe there could be more victims out there. The usage of, of the particular social media hookup site and his effort to connect with individuals for the purposes of sexual contact, um, and that coupled with any potential drug use, um, it, it creates a volatile situation for anyone. The search warrant says Barty was squatting in the Escondido apartment, and the alleged assaults happened over the past four months. It's not a crime if you want to go out and interact with somebody or pursue a sexual relationship, but there's substantial risks in doing so. And if you do intend to meet up, it's always advisable before you actually go to somebody's residence that you've never been to, maybe go to a public place where there's lots of people where you can interact with that person and get a better feel for who they are. Barti is set to be arraigned Wednesday afternoon in North County Court. In Escondido, David Goffertson, CBS 8. Thanks, David. Since Barty's arrest on Friday, police say a fifth alleged victim has come forward. If you have any information about this case, contact Escondido Police. You may have missed it, but the sun did come out today after a drizzly morning, and it's starting to turn into a theme. But is it going to continue? Meteorologist Sean Stiles is here now with a first look at your microclimate forecast. And Sean, fall officially arrives this week. It's feeling like it outside. It certainly did this morning when I woke up. Uh, light rain or heavy drizzle falling across much of San Diego. Uh, we did see trace amounts in many locations, enough to make the roadways wet. However, not really enough to measure according to the National Weather Service. As you look at the rainfall totals, not a whole lot. Uh, maybe one or two one hundredths in places like Escondido, Ramona Valley Center, uh, anywhere in the mountains, really no precipitation because the cloud deck was well below that. Uh, we will see this pattern stick around, partly because the onshore flow is very strong thanks to an area of low pressure that is situated off of Central California. That will continue to push that moist air in, and so as it cools, it condenses and gives us that chance of light to moderate 
drizzle, maybe heavy uh, drizzle in some locations. Temperatures reflect the cloud cover because you can see it stayed well below our average. 75 downtown, uh, 77 would be the 30 year average. And we stay below average until we get to Thursday where actually we are having rain in the forecast. This could produce a tenth of an inch of rain as the areas of low pressure combine over the west and that could bring some rain. Once that happens though, we warm up it for the weekend. Sounds good, Sean, thanks. Right now, shelters here in San Diego are overcrowded as thousands of migrants are being dropped off at transit centers. This morning, Border Patrol dropped off four to six busloads of migrants at the Iris Avenue Transit Center. Border Patrol says the migrants have been screened and processed. They're being moved to keep the system moving efficiently. Most of the individuals here just need to get to the airport, essentially. Um, most individuals are not remaining in San Diego. They are moving onward, so we're just guiding them. County Supervisor Jim Desmond says as many as 2,300 migrants have been dropped off in the last four to five days. We've reported major problems with water bills in the city of San Diego, including delayed bills that are in the thousands of dollars when they are finally issued. Now, the city council is considering raising the rate 20% in coming years. If approved, customers would see a 10.2% increase this December and an 8.75% rise in January of 2025. The city says the money is needed for upgrades and other projects and to pay for imported water. The potential rate hike would also cover the salary raises for 950 city water employees. The matter will go before council tomorrow afternoon. San Diegans are taking another hit to the wallet right now with gas prices, which have shot up again. So what's behind this spike and when might we see some relief at the pump? CBS 8's Steve Price talked to a petroleum analyst today. He joins us live from a gas station in Kearney Mesa with some answers. Steve. And Carlo, if you are paying with cash, a gallon of regular unleaded at this mega fuel here is $5.89 a gallon. And here in Kearney Mesa, that's actually a bargain because right across the street over there at that Chevron, the same gas, 50 cents a gallon more. And experts say this pain at the pump may get even worse. Fueling frustration, gas prices on the rise again. It's ridiculous right now. Michael Samula needs more gas than he got, but it's all he can afford right now. It's just enough to get to work and back home. Gas Buddy reports the average price in San Diego shot up 23 and a half cents a gallon in a week to $5.71. But we found several places already over six bucks a gallon, including 639 at this Chevron. And I don't think we've hit the top yet. We could be very close. Patrick DeHaan, head of petroleum analysis at Gas Buddy, says several factors are pushing up prices, including refinery problems. Four major refineries have had issues in recent weeks, uh, almost all of them uh, in Southern California, and that's causing San Diego, Orange County, Los Angeles prices all to make a big jump as these outages have impacted gasoline supply. He also says oil producers overseas are taking positions that make a bad situation worse. The Russians and the Saudis have declared a, a war on low oil prices. They did that earlier this summer as the price of oil hit $65. Uh, those countries, Russia and Saudi Arabia, cut production. And finally, it's the California Air Resources Board, or CARB, forcing stations here to continue selling the more expensive summer blend of gas, despite the rest of the country moving to winter blend September 15th. Keep in mind that while the rest of the nation's transitioned back to cheaper winter gasoline, CARB has mandated that uh, Southern California use summer gasoline until the end of October. So that's still one of the uh, uh, crutches holding up prices as well. DeHaan is hopeful prices will start coming back down soon. But in the meantime, San Diegans say filling the tank is definitely draining the budget. Cutting lunches, cutting dinners, like and it, money's tight as it is. So um, yeah, we definitely need some help out here for sure. And making the situation more frustrating is that this is usually a time when gas prices drop because the busy summer travel season is over. Kids are back in school. We're using less gas. The supply goes up, drops the price down. 
Carlo, last year we had this same exact problem. Refineries going offline, prices spiking this time of year. And you might remember the governor actually stepped in and got that switch to happen a month earlier. So we got that lower winter blend gas in October instead of having to wait till November. No word yet if he's going to step in this time too. Whatever the reason, Steve, we know people are feeling it and they're pretty upset. Now, mm. if we switch from summer blend to winter, blend early. Is that going to save us much when filling up the tank? It could be as much as 15 to 20 cents a gallon. When we're seeing prices go up 23 cents a week, I don't know, but at least at this point, it's something. And I'll tell you what the price of everything going up, we will take anything we can get. Yeah, people need a break. Steve Price reporting live for us. Thanks, Steve. The city of San Diego voted to close Point La Jolla and Boomer Beach areas year round to protect sea lions. The city council unanimously approved an amendment to the city's municipal code just over an hour ago. The beaches are already closed six months out of the year for sea lion pupping season, which runs from May to the end of October. A second reading will happen in less than two weeks. After that, the proposal will go to Mayor Todd Gloria. If he signs it, it will go into effect 30 days after that. Some of you in Ramona reached out to us about a vacant McDonald's restaurant that's become an eyesore for the community. CBS 8's Brian White is working for you to get to the bottom of what's being done about it. Yeah, people living around here are tired of seeing this vacant McDonald's just sitting here in disrepair for the past two years. They'd much rather see something done with the place, whether a new McDonald's moves back in or some other business. It's horrible looking up front, yeah. Put something there, just no matter what, yeah, just do something with it. Marked up with graffiti, boarded up with plywood, and surrounded by a torn up fence, this blighted McDonald's building has become an eyesore here on Main Street. It sucks because, you know, there's been nothing there. I miss McDonald's. Back in August 2019, a fire broke out in the basement here and was knocked down by firefighters in 30 minutes or so, with no injuries to employees. When I came, was a lot of fire station here. And yeah, that's what's happened with a lot of smoking that day. Rita Hermes has owned her salon nearby for 23 years. She remembers the fire and says many people would like to see McDonald's reopen. We have this McDonald's for so many years and we miss this McDonald's. Special like kids always ask when the McDonald's gonna come, uh, gonna open. I said, I have no idea. Everybody miss McDonald's. We wish if they come back again and make this shopping center more. We see people more driving through. Rita didn't know who owns the property, so I called the San Diego County Recorder's Office to find out. 1550 Main Street. They told me the ownership is listed as Franchise Realty Interstate Corporation and gave me an address in Vista. I drove over there and it seems they no longer have an office here. So I emailed the corporate offices for McDonald's asking what's planned for the Ramona location. They responded and said their records show that the location is open and operating. But of course, we know that isn't true. I've been watching this McDonald's every day when I open my store, nobody there. <laughs> Most people I talk to just want to see a new business come in here. While some people prefer to see McDonald's reopen, Rita has her own preferences. McDonald's is good for the kids because in the morning we don't have a McDonald's and kids love toys, but like for me, I love in and out. <laughs> That's my favorite line. <laughs> McDonald's corporate says they're going to need more time to look into this. In Ramona, working for you, Brian White, CBS 8. Thanks, Brian. And here at CBS 8, we do want to help solve problems affecting you and your community. If there's something you'd like us to look into, email us, workingforyou at cbs8.com. Still ahead tonight, does a seller have to tell you if someone died inside the home you want to buy? We verify. Plus, the numbers are in. How many people have already started their holiday shopping? And it's not even fall yet. And up next, the new exhibit that's offering new clues to a prehistoric San Diego County.